And I want the rest of you cowboys to know something. There's a new sheriff in town. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we will be benchmarking the RTX 40. 90. So I've spent the last two days overclocking the RTX 4090 to its highest potential and then benchmarking this against three other GPUs. Now, the GPUs that I used were the 6900 XT and the 2080 Ti. These are the fastest of the last two generations. So I include the 6900 XT because it's last generation to show generational improvements between the two graphics cards. And then I also included the 2080 Ti because many people who will be thinking about upgrading to a 40 series GPU typically will be two generations behind, which is 2018, so the 20 series. This also be like if you have a 5700 XT or anything else. Now, these are fully maxed out cards. My benchmarks are set up so that the graphics cards are going to be at the highest performance possible. This way you guys can see what's the max you can get out of these and really what is the true difference between these because Nvidia will be like it's like two times faster. We're going to see in competitive titles what is really the FPS difference especially if you already have your system maxed out. Is it really worth buying a new graphics card of this generation? Now for the games tested, these are tested in both 1080p and 1440p just because these are competitive benchmarks. I'm not doing 4K, I'm not doing 8K any of these things just because they're not really needed. So 1080p, 1440p, both of these tested. Now, the games tested were Warzone, and I used Caldera. I just kind of ran up a mountain and back down three times each for 1080p and 1440p on each graphics card. Fortnite. I used DX12 because it has higher FPS than performance mode. I have a Fortnite guide, FPS boost guide, on my channel. I even showed this, too, and I even proved it again. And then I also used Rainbow Six just because it has a good benchmark and Vulcan. It's a different engine. This is the Steam version, so FPS would be a little bit lower than if I just used the pure Ubisoft version, but I already have it on Steam and I'm not buying the game again on Ubisoft. Vulcan also is where I hope many games will go to in the future. I like Vulcan's optimization. I like that it's very open. So this is just me hoping that more games will move to Vulcan. And then I did include two synthetics for you guys. So I used Time Spy Extreme, which is a 4K benchmark, just because obviously Time Spy Extreme most, it's a 4K and it will show the true performance of these graphics cards. And then I also use Port Royal for RTX so that for you ray tracing people, you guys can compare these numbers, compare them even to yours if you want to, and just see really what the RTX improvements are. Now, let's get into the PC spec. So I have my 12700K in the PC, which is running eight cores, eight threads. This performs better. I have a video on this as well. So hyper-threading off, E-cores off, running at 5.1 all core on the cores, and then 4.8 gigahertz on the ring, just to make sure that we're getting that lowest latency. Now, also, I'll be using dual rank DDR4, 4000 CL15 on a real 1T. So this is the lowest latency DDR4 you will really see <clears throat> now for the GPUs. So for the RTX 4090, which is a gigabyte gaming OC card, it is the only 4090 I could get my hands on. This has a 600 watt power limit. It is a very, very good. It's the highest power limit you can get on these 4090 so far. And I'm running plus 135 on the core, which is about 3,015 megahertz in games with plus 1,700 on the VRAM. I have very good VRAM. Most cap out about 1500. This is going to 50, this is going to 1700. So a little 200 megahertz boost there. Nothing insane, but still will help. And then I have about an average core, which what I've noticed is the core OC is not that insane because these boost so far out of the box that, and to be honest, just having faster VRAM is a little more important. For the 6900 XT, I have a 6900 XT OC formula here. This is liquid metal power limits removed with 2700 megahertz min, 2800 megahertz maximum, 2150 megahertz on the VRAM set to the fast timing standard. Now, this was removed with the power limit using more power tools than online a uh, software, set it to about like 500 watts and never hit a power limit ever. And then I was running max speed on this one on the fans. Next, I have the 2080 Ti. This was flashed with a custom XOC BIOS, which let me do plus 120 on the core, plus 900 on the VRAM. So 
core speed. So the core speed was about 2160 megahertz at 1.125 volts. So that's higher than what NVIDIA allows you to do out of the box, but flashing this XOC BIOS allow me to go a little higher. This graphics card, just in case you're wondering, a 20, this 2080 Ti is about the level of a 3070 Ti. A little bit faster, a little bit slower, just kind of depending on the game. And resizable bar is on. The 2080 Ti does not support resizable bar, but the other two GPUs do, and having it on doesn't hurt it. So this just gives a little more FPS boost, and we'll show you all power limits were removed. I never hit a power limit. I could not get my 49 to hit 600 watts in any stress test I threw at it. And the card is very temperature, like power efficient. It didn't get hot at all. So now let's get into the benchmarks. Before we get into the benchmarks, if you guys are interested in supporting me and allowing me to purchase more hardware, feel free to purchase my overclock and optimization guide. This is going to allow you to become an even better gamer, getting higher FPS, lower input delay, just overall improving your gaming experience, $100. This will fully overclock all of your parts. Make sure that you have the fastest PC possible out of your current parts and possibly recommending some upgrades if you are interested. As well, if you're interested, you can... Um, sign up for my Patreon, starting at only a dollar per month, going up to ten dollars. You can get special access to my Discord and some other awesome benefits, as you guys can see. Make sure you guys click the link though, and then also if you want to, you can join my Discord here, the Chamber Tech Discord, if you want some info on overclocking and just some general PC knowledge as well. As this is where you'll get the special access to my Discord. But now let's get onto the benchmarks. We're gonna start off the benchmarks here with Call of Duty. Warzone at 1080p. Now here the 6900 XT wins. This just kind of shows it's like power with the low driver head that Nvidia has. So as you can see, it's a good. It's a good bit faster, actually about 15 FPS higher on the averages. The 1% lows are about 12% higher, but the 0.1% are 2% lower. Which these are the ones that you feel. The 20 Ti is about 15% slower than the 4090 and 21% fat slower than the 6900 XT. Still, you're getting 240 FPS at this spot average with 191% 1% lows and 140% 0.1%. This is still a really strong card, but it is showing its weaknesses compared to the other two graphics cards. So when you compare these two, you see it's not that bad. 1080p though, is not what I feel like most people will not be purchasing a RTX 4094. And here we will be comparing now 1440p benchmarks. So here with the Warzone 1440p benchmarks, as you can see, the 6900 XT has significantly higher average once again. But what do you notice? These lows are actually the worst out of all of them. With 165 lows, the 4090 has 15% higher 1% lows and 3% higher, 0.1% lows. If you're a 1440p gamer and you have a 6900 XT, this is where you'll notice the FPS increase. The same thing with a 3080 Ti, 3090, 3090 Ti. You will notice that FPS increase. That 15% smoother 1% lows is where you can see it. And this is where many people see that they say that they have issues with an RT, with a 6900 XT at 1440p. They're like, it's stuttering, it's not as smooth. This is why. Because the percentage frame times are not as good but this isn't the only game most people play let's go to a very heavy cpu bound game now which is fortnite fortnite 1080p and look the 69 the 6900 xt does have the highest one percent and 0.1 percent lows the average fps is slightly lower than the 4090 but this is where the 2080 ti does kind of show its weaknesses a little bit where it has very much a lower 0.1 percent and the one percent lows are a little bit uh, about the same obviously these gpus in this game at 1080p you basically can run whatever gpu you want you're not going to be gpu limited as long as you have like a 16 series and up you'll have no issues running this game um performance mode though just make sure you're not running that dx12 is faster on a newer generation of graphics card 1440p is a little bit of a different story. Here you can see kind of the weaknesses of the 6900 XT and the 2080 Ti. These do not like higher resolutions, um, especially the 2080 Ti just kind of with it being an older graphics card. It's sim it has the same amount of um, compute units or SMs as the 3080 just as a comparison. But 
as you can see, the higher you crank up the resolution on the older GPUs, the FPS does lower. With the 4090 having the highest 1% lows and the highest average refresh rate being 4.3% faster than the 6900 XT. And it does have slightly lower 0.1%, but at the same point, you are at 360 FPS average with all of these GPUs. And let's say for the 6900 XT and the 4090, you're getting over 300, you're getting 300 FPS, 0.1% lows. You do not have to worry about FPS in these two graphics cards here. Even at 1440p, you will be perfectly fine. You can run even a 360 hertz 1440p monitor with these. But now we're going to go on to a Vulcan, which is a different engine for, for Rainbow Six benchmarks. So here at Rainbow Six Siege, this is at 1080p. This is the RTX 4090. FPS results 813 with a minimum of 684 and a max of 1009. As you can see, there's only about 62% GPU load with a 65% CPU load. These are all low settings, just a reminder. 6900 XT, 743, so about, about a 70 FPS lower for this, and then about a little 120% lower min FPS. And max FPS is slightly higher. That's kind of known for AMDs having really high highs and lower lows. That's what does get the FPS result to be lower. GPU load though, as you can see, 74%. The CPU load is also slightly higher here. All low 1080p. And now for the 20 ATI. So 625. Now, one thing you'll see is this only has 30 FPS lower lows than the 6900 XT. It does have a max FPS that's even lower than the 4090, but still. This is where you kind of start to notice that this GPU does show its age. 96% GPU load is not something you want to be at. You want to have as low GPU usage as possible for these. You especially want to be below 95%. That's kind of when maxing out your GPU does start to add a little bit more input lag. So upgrading past the 20 ATI, you would notice an FPS increase and also an input lag decrease just from the lower GPU load. But now it's 1440p time. So just as a reminder, here's the 1080p RTX 4090 results. And here is the 1080, the, sorry, the 1440p 4090 results. Only about less than 10 FPS lower minimums. Oh, only six uh, max, uh, sorry, uh, average FPS, 28 lo FPS lower min and 40 FPS lower max. This is still insane with only 83% GPU um, load. It adds about 20%, which is not actually that insane either. So one thing you'll notice is just that this GPU is very much meant for higher resolutions. So if you're a higher resolution gamer, highly recommend this graphics card here. Comparing the 6900 XT, 655, this does lose about 88 FPS. This is when the higher GPU, the... 6900 XT not liking higher resolution, so just come in. 17% higher GPU load there with 5 FPS lower min. And then look, 242 lower max. 6900 XT does not like high resolutions. If you're a 1080p gamer, just keep a 6900 XT. It's going to be the amazing graphics card for you guys. And then for the 28 Ti, 432, you lose, 100, you lose almost 200 FPS in the average. You lose 155 in the min and 241 in the max and 60 so the last so this gets your gpu about nine degrees hotter with higher gpu load at 97 percent. you will definitely feel the input lag here maybe in fast movements this will cause your fps to dip the 4090 won't 6900 xt you'll be fine so 20 ati 1440p i would not recommend especially if you're on 1080p you can probably still get away with it for a little bit especially if you use a max out the card and if you find a way to get this gpu even cooler you'll get slightly more fps just because these cards are very hot and cause a lot of down clocking so just removing the down clocking lowering your temperatures would be a great way just to get a little bit more out of your 20 ati if you still have one now and don't want to upgrade but now it's time for the synthetic benchmarks all right, we're going to start off with Port Royal here. So this is the ray tracing benchmark. This is at 1440p. Now, one thing you'll see here is just how much difference the two, the th difference between a 4090 and then a 6900 XT and a 20 ATI are. So the 6900 XT is only about 1800 points higher. 
the 6900 XT is known for not having great ray tracing, just so you know this. 3090, 3080i, any 30 series will have significantly higher ray tracing score and a higher performance in this benchmark. But you are getting significantly over double the score with the 4090 showing that if you are looking into ray tracing, especially like games like Cyberpunk, Spider-Man, all these games, 4090 will definitely be able to pull some really great FPS with ray tracing. 2080 Ti, 10,000. This was that was the first generation of ray tracing. It was not amazing for the FPS. Luckily, though, there is DLSS on the 2080 Ti that could bring your FPS, your score up a good bit. But it's not the clearest. But for single player games, it should be fine. Just to know, the 6900 XT kind of has DLSS. It's not the same thing, really. DLSS is Nvidia only. So you would be actually probably able to get a better performance on single player ray tracing games with the 2080 Ti, but 6900 XT does technically perform better. Now on to Time Spy Extreme, a 4K benchmark. Now with Time Spy Extreme 4K benchmark, as a reminder, you can see the 4090 is getting about probably 80% higher graphics score than a 6900 XT. Time Spy Extreme is 4K, as a reminder. The 6900 XT does suffer at higher resolutions. So does the 28 Ti just because it doesn't have that power in it. So you're getting almost a third. You're getting about a third more, 33% more 4K performance going from the 28 Ti to the 6900 XT. When overclocked as a reminder there. And then you're getting almost 80% going to a 4090. Just as something to think about a six so on Time Spy, not Time Spy Extreme. So Time Spy is a 1440p benchmark. The 6900 XT stock is about 22,000, and you're barely below that with the 4090. So that just shows the how fast this GPU will be at 4K. Just a little thing that I want to add. I was playing Halo because I had someone in my Discord actually ask me to try the game out. I ran the game at 4K 240 FPS locked, no problem. It was pulling a lot of power in the 4090, but you can play games on like a Samsung G8, the 4K 240 Hertz monitor, no problems at all. So as you can see, we've seen the benchmarks now, and now let's talk about if you really should buy an RTX 4090. Now, should you buy an RTX 4090? Maybe not. Now, what you'll notice from these benchmarks, especially in the games, was that the 6900 XT and the 4090 were very close in FPS. Here's why. My CPU was not fast enough. I have one of the fastest CPUs out right now, and it's still not fast enough for an RTX 4090. So I've literally spent the day tuning my CPU to get a little more performance. I fully tuned my RAM even farther, and I have fully tuned in the process of tuning my CPU now. So if you guys want a more like extensive like showing the difference between faster CPUs benchmark, let me guys let me know down in the comments if you guys want that. But I had to get this video out quick and I knew this OC worked, that's why I did that. But so maybe instead of if you have like a 3080 Ti and you have like let's say like a Ryzen 5000 CPU or like a 10th gen or even a 12th gen, maybe it's just might be best just to upgrade to like a 3090 Ti for cheap or a 6900 XT for cheap. Just get one of these GPUs for cheap, throw it in your PC, and you'll be getting the same FPS with a 4090. So if you are purchasing a 4090 though, and you are a competitive player or you want to play competitively, I'm going to recommend that you get a 1440p 270 hertz monitor. I'll leave a link down below, affiliate link by the way. But that is probably the sweet spot for competitive players on this monitor. I know there's like 360 hertz monitors coming out very soon, but you're going to be very hard, especially in competitive games, unless like Valorant or CSGO, to get 360 FPS all the time. So, just 1440p 270 hertz is the sweet spot, as you can see in Wars, and you're getting 270 FPS average in this game. And then, just in case you're wondering what 4090 to purchase, I have a video on this, but. Now that the 4090s are actually out, I didn't know any info about the 4090s when that video came out about AIE B cards. Literally buy whatever 4090 you want. They will all perform pretty much the same. These are very power efficient cards. You can get one with a 450 watt power limit. You can buy whichever 4090 you want. It'll be perfectly fine. I run my card at the silent mode now. 
I was pulling 300 watts in games at 60C with 0% fan speed. It was silent. It was amazing. But let me know what other videos you guys want from the 4090. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button down below. Subscribe. Join the Discord. Subscribe to me on Patreon if you guys want to support me and allow me to purchase more hardware for you guys. But I'll see you guys later. Peace.